r slash credit. Girls of Reddit who have rejected people. What's the worst way someone has taken it? He sent me an email with a three-page essay attached. It was written entirely in third person recounting his first rejection by a girl named Tania at the age of 16. There were a lot of solitary beach walks, she's the perfect girl talk, him not talking no for answer and the story eventually ends with him drinking antifreeze, slipping into a coma, hospitalized and eventually recuperating. Only to tell poor Tania that she could avoid it his and his parents pain by agreeing to date him. The email said, so you know what you are getting into. I was 19 and did not see this extreme level of crazy coming, but knew I needed to really make how I felt clear. I immediately called him to reiterate that I do not want to be with him, I no longer want to be friends with him, and if he contacted me again I would change my number. I'll let a friend of his know what was going on 5 days later he called from a different number to tell me he was out in the country one with a gun to his head, and if I didn't agree to be with him then and there he was pulling the trigger. I lied and convinced him I had to leave because I had a family emergency, aunt sick in the hospital, but we would talk the next day. Had mutual friend call him and report back as is suspected he was full of shit. Sure enough I was right, he was totally fine. He called the next day and with the most sing-song creepy serial killer tone said you think you're so nice. What type of shitty human being doesn't agree to what someone needs when they tell you they are going to kill themselves? You piece of shit. I lost the plot. Told him I'm changing my numbers and the next time he contacts me it will be the police involved. He just laughed the whole time and told me he hopes I die alone like I deserve. Radio silence for 6 years until I'm getting married. I have an email from him hey. Wow it's been a while. How are you? Would be so great to catch up sometime. Fucking psychotic asshole. Obviously I never replied and changed my email again. He shoved me into a wall and busted my head open. I was taking a break at work behind the building listening to music and enjoying the breeze and Kawalker I constantly tried to avoid because he was a creep started asking me out. I'd already been irritated because of shitty customers and the overbearing heat inside, so instead of the usual brush off reply, I snapped at him and made it clear I was in no way interested, had a boyfriend whom I loved and that he needed to get the fuck out of my personal space. I went to walk away and he grabbed my arm to twist me around trying to back me against the wall and when I managed to finally rip my arm away and press him back to get him off me, he got pissed shoved me back of my head hit the wall, split open about an inch and a half, bled a lot had to get about 7 stitches, he got fired and also arrested for assault, he tried to say I had hit him first, but luckily there was a camera around back that caught the whole thing, edit, ok, I did not think this would blow up like it did, and I went through the thread and thought I'd address some things, I apologize if advance for this next wall of text, but I'm on mobile, I was was 19 when this happened, and he was 21, no one really liked him cause he was a dick and thought he knew better than everyone. Even though he half-assed everything and constantly got in people's way, he also asked out every female worker multiple times and was really pushy about it, made us all extremely uncomfortable just to be around him because he didn't seem to understand personal space. When it came to anyone female, we were all constantly telling him to back off. We worked the same shift cause he kept getting rotated around for problems and finally they left him where he was cause he only harassed me and I was the only one who didn't seem back quote bothered. Akar I didn't complain, which I realized later I should have cause it might have gotten him fired sooner before this all went down. Because I was the only female on shift he'd always try to get with me, it never worked and I found ways to keep my distance. The day he busted my head open the heat and long day combined and I snapped at him instead of just walking away like normal which was something he obviously hadn't been expecting and so he grabbed me and tried to hold me back while he yelled about me being a bitch. I ended up with a bruise shaped like his hand that I didn't notice till I got to the hospital. After he shoved me and I hit the wall, I started yelling at him and he was freaking out a bit cause for once I was actively standing up for myself and he started to realize what he'd just done. He only flipped out for real and started apologizing a mile a minute when I reached back and my hand came back covered in blood. I went inside still yelling at him 
and our manager came over to snap at me until I told him what happened and showed him my bloody hand. He turned me to check out my head and panicked, unfortunately for the idiot still apologizing. Our uniform shirt was white, and the back of mine wasn't anymore, I know head wounds bleed a lot, but it looked like I'd been hurt worse than I was. I even freaked out at how much blood there was once I took off the shirt. I got taken to the hospital and the cops were called, and they arrested him later. We found out he was on parole, probation, for punching his girlfriend in the face earlier in the year and kicking her dog around afterwards. He was in jail for a good 7 years after the fact. All I did was give a report on what had happened and the tape proved my story. I never went to court. I was 19 and this really wasn't that big a deal to me. The injury wasn't that bad. I was in the hospital longer for questioning than anything else. I was almost completely stitched up before the police even came. All I had was a tiny hairline fracture, not even a concussion. I was more pissed off than anything. I didn't even think to sue, but I had bigger things to deal with at that point in my life than some idiot at work, and I sort of just moved on after everything. I told a former classmate from high school that I wasn't interested several years after we had graduated. I was fresh out from my divorce and I knew I was in a terrible place. I didn't want to take out my baggage on anyone who didn't deserve it and wanted to take time to piece myself together. I wasn't interested in it how, but I did all I could to make him understand that I was a mess and not interested in anything new. He seemed cool about it at first. Then he started going through every single picture I'd ever posted on my FASA book and liking them and commenting on each one that I was cute, pretty, or beautiful. I'm talking going back through pictures from 3 and 3 years before, as far back as FASA book existed at the time. I told him bluntly that wasn't appropriate and stalking my page wasn't going to make me want to change my mind. Next thing I know, I'm getting messages from friends that he sent messages to telling them what s good guy he was and they should convince me to go out with him. I felt really bad for the guy because I'd known his whole family for my entire life and we had been friends together as 3 and 4 year olds. I knew he got picked on a lot for being weird and I'd seen a lot of people who had bullied him in school. I always stopped if I saw it or stuck up for him because he seemed like a nice kid and no one deserves to bleed. I was bullied terribly myself. Now don't read me wrong. I wasn't a heroine always swooping in to save the lifelong friend. It wasn't like that at all. Our families are old family friends. His family is basically my extended family, so I guess I always looked at him like a cousin or something. We didn't grow up together as I was an army brat, but we moved home before high school, so we did go to the same school for those four years. I can only remember three instances in all of that four years where I saw him getting bullied and was able to help. Anyway, because of that, I tolerated his shit a lot longer than I would have with anybody else because I felt bad for the unfair treatment he'd had, much like myself. After he started contacting my friends, I became blunt, told him I thought he was a nice enough person, but that a I'd always looked at him as just an extension of family and had never felt anything more for him. I told him I was sorry if that hurt his feelings, but I wasn't going to disrespect him by lying to him and b if he was going to continue to disrespect me by harassing my friends and stalking my FASA book and refusing to accept my right to say no, then I couldn't be his friend either. He logged out after that, and I heard nothing for 3 days and thought that was the end of it. He'd lick his wounds and leave me be. On the 4th day, I woke up to 48 notifications on my FASA book just from him liking pictures he hadn't, yet and commenting a second and third time on ones he had. Miss you, wish you like me too, love you, nice boobs in this one. That was it. I deleted every single comment, deleted him, blocked him and then turned around and called his mother. It was probably a shit move, but I knew he wasn't raised to treat people like he was me, and he's pretty close to his mom. She was not impressed and promised I wouldn't hear from him again. I didn't. We were 24 at the time. I'm currently in this position of trying to reject someone, and they won't leave me alone. This is my current boyfriend, and I'm dealing with trying to get rid of him. When I first tried, I was threatened by him saying he planned on killing himself, and leaving a suicide note saying he did it, because of how I was the reason why he did it. The second time he guilt tripped me into staying with him. 
third time he threatened to go to my family and tell them intimate details about our relationship. It's a battle every day of trying to get out and being threatened to a point of constant panic attacks. It's not as easy to reject someone and move on because there are some people that can't handle rejection. My breaking point came when I was physically assaulted by him, having my hair pulled, face grabbed when I didn't listen, isolated from friends, forced to delete social media, and not being able to go out to stores he thought a guy would try and talk to me in. I was lied to and cheated on and that wasn't a good enough reason to him for me wanting to reject him. When I talk of leaving him, I'm met with constant threats of how he'll come to my house and drag me to where he wants, he'll show up to where I am, until I tell him I'll listen to him, and how does he know where I am? He forced me to share my location with him, and if I even try to block him, I'm given several threatening messages, calls, and threats that, if I don't answer he will contact my family. How does he contact my family? He works at T-Mobile and gets friendly with my family somehow finding ways to get their numbers. My brother was working on a fence and he said he wants to get his fence fixed and they exchanged contacts without me knowing. I don't know what makes some people not handle being rejected and what it does to them to not be able to handle someone not wanting them, but I hope one day I'm free from this. I've constantly thought of killing myself to get rid of this suffering, but I can't give him the satisfaction or risk another girl getting treated like this by him. A few instances come to mind. Age 6, a boy in my grade, convinced his friends every recess to help him chase me, grab me by the arm, and push me on the ground so he could sit on me asking me to be his girlfriend. I complained to the teacher, but she said he was just playing. So one day my friends and I concocted a plan. I wore a long sweater, and when they started chasing me, I tucked my hands inside my sleeves and ran towards the back corner of the playground. He grabbed my sleeve, and I slid right out of the sweater. My one friend was waiting behind the playground with a giant stick they had found, and smacked the shit out of the kid across the face, breaking his glasses. Our other friend took the stick and ran towards the back fence to dispose it while the teacher came out to see why the kid was crying. My one friend who swung said when the kid sat it on me, he was hurting me, so my friend shoved him off and didn't mean to hurt him. The kid cried and screamed it wasn't true and he got hit with a stick, but there was no large stick nearby to be found. He wasn't allowed to talk to me the rest of the year, and I moved schools after that due to the military. Age 16, I was in a high school where we were full-time dual enrolled at a college campus. You want to see creepy stories? Imagine the creepy small town guys who sit in the back of community college classes in the same room as relatively sheltered high school juniors. My class had 70 girls, and I'm pretty certain nearly all of us had at least one stalker story. One girl had a creepy 30 years old sent her flowers, but her mom worked on campus and found out. One girl had a guy following her to class daily, so a group of us started escorting her and confronted him when he tried to still come up to her. I had one who started as just a friend of my assistant manager at work, who was 22, that I happened to run into on campus a lot. He had the same lunch time some days, or so I thought, and would join my group of friends. He was actually skipping class it turns out, and was even failing it, just so back quote run into me at lunch. I found out from another friend of his he had withdrawn from it months before I found out. What started as small talk or a casual friend got kind of weird and made me feel uncomfortable. Eventually one day he showed up at my work after I told him on aim I didn't want to go to dinner with him. His first retort was, if I was concerned about age, it's okay because he had looked up the 16 to 24 law in our state. Did not help the situation at all. When he came to my work at the movie theater I panicked because he came up to my line in concession and told me he'd wait in the lobby until I got off work. I went to my assistant manager, his friend, but didn't want to make a big deal about his buddy being weird and cause a scene. They needed coverage to close, so I volunteered to stay until midnight with the other closers. When the crowd started to dwindle after 9, the guy came up and tried to talk to me and pester when my shift would end and where I wanted to eat. I ran in the back to busy myself with any menial cleaning task. My female coworker, who I'm so grateful for to this day, started to piece it together. 
she went straight to his friend first, our assistant manager, demanding he make his friend leave me alone. Then she stormed out in the lobby in such a fury, got in his face, and went off on him, yelling and screaming and waving her arms around gesturing. I stayed in the back with another female coworker who was reassuring me, because I wasn't even dating yet and was terrified. But I heard you fucking creep she's in high school and a minor can't find anyone your own age who will tolerate your pansy ass among other things. He left and I guess his bro had a very serious talk with him after that. I never saw him again. The assistant manager and their other buddy, who was actually cool, told me about how that guy had dropped his class and they didn't know it was to follow me around campus or else they would've said something way sooner. Age 21, I met someone on Tumblr who seemed cool at first. He was a grad student at my college, but in a different program. We started talking about comics and writing and stuff, even exchanged emails so I could read his writing. He started sliding comments into conversation about how I'd be hotter if I gained weight and got a little thicker. But I'd just ignore them at first. Then he got slowly creepier about my looks and talking about me on a pedestal. He would make comments about my ass even after I asked him nicely to stop. He asked me out and I rejected him. He got mad and said I was racist because skin color was clearly the only thing we didn't have in common. Got some angry passive aggressive messages and emails, and finally in one he said he saw me walking on campus with another guy, and described what I wore. That's when I found my backbone of steel basically, and sent him back a long angry detailed email about are all the things I didn't like about him, and why I wouldn't date him, or even be friends with him anymore, and what would happen, if he even walked within 5 feet of me on campus. Deleted all electronic connection. He periodically still sends a friend request on platforms that I block right away. The most recent one was LinkedIn. If he requests a second time after I reject it, I just respond with fuck off, Brendan. And reject it again. Luckily he doesn't live in the area anymore. And it's been mainly radio silence for the last few years. A dude had been asking me out on a site that isn't really meant for dating, but lots of people try to use it for that. I kept telling him thanks but no, because I got a creepy feeling from him. One day, I'm going through my gmail, and I see he had sent me a message on the site a month prior. I read it, and it was sweet, so I told him, if he really wants he can have a date. He immediately responds, and we plan to go out the next day. Fast forward two thirds into the date. He's okay, but definitely not someone I would go out with again. He mentions that he's actually leaving to go back to his home country the next day. I'm relieved because I think this means I won't have to tell him I don't want to go out again. Nope, it means that he decides he's going back home, but he will buy a plane ticket and come back to me. I tell him, plead really, a million times please, don't spend thousands of dollars on a plane ticket for me. He says he has a year until he starts nursing school, so he's going to spend that year in the country I live in. So we can give our relationship a chance, and even if it doesn't work out, it's okay. He's trying to talk to me while he's back home, and with every text message it's more and more obvious that he's insane. I tell him he needs to stop talking to me, and I don't think we should go out when he comes back, so don't come back for me. A few weeks later though, he's back. I agree to go out again, just because I thought it would be too cruel not to. On the date he's a mess, basically saying anything he thinks will make me like him. I gently tell him that he should be himself and the right person for him will like him for who he is. It takes him a minute, but he realizes that he's being rejected and starts crying. So, we are sitting in a crowded restaurant with a grown man crying and me trying not to look guilty. As he's wiping away his tears he said he realizes I'm right. There are some other cringe-worthy details that I'll spare, but long story short he immediately disappears and heads back to his home country. <laughs> TLDR, guy I barely knew wrecked my laptop pouring water on it because I would not have sex with him. This is my first Reddit post. Reading through these I was thinking, I'm glad I'm not so young anymore. But the more I read, an incident jumped out that I had suppressed. I moved to Boston from Detroit in 2011 and wound up volunteering at a small software firm to get to know people and work my way into a job. One of the employees decided he wanted to show me around Boston, and there was a band playing Motown in Central Square. 
I wasn't trying to date, and made it clear. This guy insisted he just wants to show me the city. So I meet him in Central Square, it was a Saturday about 7pm, and we head over. He grabs my hand and tries walking me around, like we are together, red flag 1. We get to the bar, and it was what you would expect of Boston playing Motown, so by 9.30 I was ready to go. He said he had to take the commuter rail to Lynn by 11, and couldn't miss it, and I was going home. He starts following me home. I live near Fresh Pond and he says he would have time to make his train. We stop at a store, and he gets wine, and continues following me home though, he had time to catch his train. He asks to use my bathroom, then proceeds chasing me around the apartment for a kiss while swigging wine. I keep telling him to leave, but he is arguing with me, and grabbing on me, and now drunk, on the huge liter bottle of wine. I went in the kitchen, and got a steak knife, and hid it on the shelf next to the front door. I kept asking him to leave, started crying and finally forced him out of my apartment, physically pushing him out the door. Incredibly frustrating to have a man sticking his lips out at you, and being pushy af. I'm 40 years old and divorced, too old for this shit. But it doesn't end. He starts calling me, and begging me to let him stay, because it is too late to catch the commuter rail, and he has to stay outside. I was unaware of this sex hustle, and just told him no repeatedly. He was right outside the apartment and my two roommates were not back yet, thank god. But on the way. Mind you, we are black and roommates were white, so I wanted this guy gone with his spectacle. He would not leave begged and begged and begged to sleep on my couch promising not to touch me. So finally, I told him, he could sleep on the couch figuring the two male roommates would deal with him, if he tried anything. He went to bed, and when my one roommate gets in, and goes to his room, the guy starts knocking on my bedroom door, telling me he's afraid of my roommates. It was like 3am at this point, and I was so fucking annoyed. So I said okay, whatever, you sleep in here, and I will sleep on the couch, and we switched. Next morning 7am I go to my room and wake him up. He in the bathroom and I'm thinking great that's over. My laptop won't turn on. I pick it up and all of this water comes running out of it. The sass hole poured, and entire cup of water over my keyboard, because I would not fuck him on what was never a date. I walked him to the bus, stop in complete silence, didn't even bring up the laptop. All the while he's telling me there was something wrong with me. I called the owner of the software company and told him his employee had gotten drunk at my house and wrecked my laptop with water. He replaced my laptop and he fired the guy and I was dismissed from my volunteering. You really don't think you are walking into an insanely abusive situation with people you barely know, but this guy had me crying and thinking about stabbing him to make him leave. And I grew up in the ghetto, it was still too much for me. I later told my friend and she said, once you put a fool out you can never let them back in. Sometimes these incidents are too embarrassing to share, but we have to speak up, so people understand the behavior is unacceptable. I have a lot of crazy stories about moving to Boston. Well, there are all of the guy friends that I've had to say no to 99% of them except for my best friend, took it really badly. Their attitudes towards me changed, they spent less time with me, after years of platonic friendship, really not fucking cool, and eventually they were just cold as hell. One friend in particular, I had known for 7 freaking years. He came over to sell me some pot, when he was quite drunk. He starting rubbing his hands all over my legs, and telling me I need to get tattoos, and be a suicide girl. Then he licked my jaw all the way to my ear, and grabbed my waist, and I got freaked out. But he'd been such a pleasant and supportive friend before this, that I gently pushed him, and said that I was not open to having sex with him, instead of smashing his fucking face in for touching me without consent. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. He got up, snarled have a nice fucking life, and stormed out of there. He was so pissed he forgot his pot scale and his iPod. I had to chase the sasshole down the street to give him his shit because he refused to stop and listen to me when I tried calling after him to tell him he forgot stuff. And that's basically what happens with every guy friend I've had. It's really wonderful. Then there are the strangers who have called me a whore after I reject them. That's taking it pretty badly, but it doesn't hurt anywhere near as much as it does when somebody you trusted turns out to just have been waiting to fuck you for years. Edit. Oh, how could I forget my favorite betrayal? 
my good friend of 3 years, trying to kiss me and me telling him I wasn't interested. He never messages me again. Then next thing I know, people are telling me about how he's going around telling everybody that we dated and had sex, but that I wasn't good in bed, so he ditched me. Fucking lol asshole. And he's not even the only one to have lied about sleeping with me. It's like these guys don't even care if you hear about it because they know everybody is going to believe them over a girl. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe the channel.